Hello there, my name's Neil Cooper. I'm a former shepherd of two large flocks of 1300 and another flock of 700. Uh, I was made redundant, or more or less my contract ran out and I got rid of the sheep back in about 93. Uh, so I've been doing other things since then. You might notice these plaques, love and peace. So uh, I do spiritual teachings these days of uh, the six senses and things like that. So my other channels on my channel page anyway. But um, yeah, I thought I'd give a little insight into, you know, what I'd done as a shepherd and, and the different jobs and things that happened that it might help some of the small flock owners that are just getting into it and useful advice and such like. Uh, last week's video, I was just saying about um, different things. Um, I was talking about breech births and, and how it's good to hold them by the back legs just above their hock. Hold them very tight because they're very slippery and just swing them maybe 10 or 15 seconds. I said about 30 and just eject that fluid out of their lungs by swinging them uh, really hard, quite hard to really throw that fluid out through. And the other thing, you know, when you've lambed a lamb, especially a breech, is just to wring their nose out. Just wring it out with your hand and, and push that fluid out of the nose. Then they're not breathing any in. So that's another good thing to do. Also putting your hand down the back of their throat and just you know making sure there's no fluid obstruction there um is a good thing to do so uh yeah and then you know you know some of them don't seem to want to wake up and breathe do they and uh you know there's different ways to encourage them to do that and giving them a good hard rub you know with your hand up and down across their chest just to wake them up sort of thing because they're sort of half comatose sometimes when they come out uh other farmers do things like just annoy them a bit to make them breathe it's getting a bit of straw just poking up their nose a little way and it just annoys them a bit and they you know uh, take that first breath you know uh there are some that say you can push your finger up their anus if it's really bad, you know, but uh, just basically really, you know, waking them up because they're sort of half asleep sometimes. Now, uh, this video is about, you know, uh, post lambing or things t to do with, you know, the lambs in the individual pens. Now, if you can have individual pens, that's much better, you know, because you can take them away from the group. They don't get snatched by other ewes that are close to lambing and mismothered and lost. And <laughs> so, yeah, having individual pens, about one for every uh, 10 ewes is roughly what you want that you've got in the flock. And just make sure it's always disinfected and clean bedding in there. And, you know, uh, put them in there for 24 hours. And, you know, then you can put them into a follow-on pen. Because if you turn them straight out of the field, out of an individual pen, they quite often get lost, some of them, and won't find their mother. And you spend half an hour a day just trying to find lost lambs and put them back with their mother again. So having a individual uh, follow-on pen or, you know, however many you need of them, with about 15 ewes in it, maybe up to 20 ewes in it with their lambs after the individual pens, you know, 24 to 48 hours after they've been born, put them into the follow-on pens and it gives them a chance to find their mothers in a in a situation where they're bound to find them. So, you know, in, in a small pen. And then when you turn them out, you don't get any problems with them getting mismothered. Or you can do it out in the field, have two release pens in the big field that you put one day's worth in then the next day's worth in and let the full first, last day's worth out into the field their mother's up and you know they recognize their mother's call and the mother starts to recognize their call after a few days so that's a good thing to do now uh you know you've got to watch out for diseases of course there's there's different diseases that can uh, start getting into those individual pens and the big pens. So, you know, even disinfecting those big pens occasionally and, and making sure they're well bedded, you know, every couple of days or two or three days, bed them up and give them a nice de uh, litter so there's not afterbirth on the surface and, and amniotic fluids and such like. So, uh, yeah, and uh, having them in the individual pen. Now, uh, once you've got them in an individual pen, you know, check the used milks working on both sides and unblock the teats because sometimes they get blocked up. So you check she's got milk. Uh, you know, dip the lamb's navel in iodine, both, you know, and give it a good slug on it so it's completely cured because, you know, you don't do it and you miss the old lamb occasionally. You go back there a day later and they've got an infection in their uh, navel, you know, umbilical cord, and it'll go up into, the, uh, into their guts. So, you know, make sure you do it. It's worth doing. Um, then, you know, uh, what I... You should check your individual pens a few times a day, but at least twice a day. Really go, go around and check every lamb virtually. That is just stepping from one individual pen into the next 
and and getting the lambs up and checking the ewes all right, making sure they got full bellies. Now, uh, you know, that they have been up and suckled. So within sort of six hours, four to six hours, they need to have suckled colostrum. Otherwise, they start to get ill, hypothermia, all sorts. You know, so they do need a lot of energy. So, you know, even if you can, after a couple of hours of that, those lambs being born, get into that individual pen, get the lambs up, see if they're thrifty and healthy, put your hands under their belly and just go boink, boink, and you can feel their you know, bloated and full with milk. And, you know, you soon notice one that's empty. So checking they've had a good feed is, you know, good to do. If they're not feeding, then you can, if you've got the time, get them to suckle on the ewe, you know, teach them how to put them to the teat and such like. Or, you know, if not, you've got to feed them or bottle feed them or stomach feed them if you haven't got time. But, you know, they do need to learn to suckle as much as possible, of course. Uh, and they can lose that ability within a few hours. You know, they come out of the womb knowing how to suckle, but if you stomach feed them a couple of times or bottle feed them a couple of times, they start to lose the idea of how to find the teat on the U. So uh, that's good to do. <laughs> now, one of the things you do need to watch out for is any disease. Now, um, and watery mouth, once your individual pen's been used a few times and you haven't disinfected it, even if you are disinfecting it sometimes, they get this watery mouth and it's just they get a wet, very wet around the side of their mouth. Very few lambs ever recover from that. And my suggestion is even with a really good dousing of disinfectant and cleaned out, new bedding, they still get it in that same pen. So leave that pen, you know, mark it, don't use this pen at least for a week and, you know, disinfect it every single day. And, uh, you know, because don't put more lambs in there, they'll they get it as well. Uh, so avoid that pen for a while. Um, you know, it, you can get drenches uh, that you can give the lamb a little squirt of a drench that they swallow and I've never seen any recover from it yet. So it's you know if you start getting it then it's best to avoid that as much as possible now uh the other thing with lambs is that some sheep have got the hereditary disorder of interned eyelids the eyelid lashes are actually turned right in onto the eye and they're scraping up and down on that eyeball and uh you won't notice it when they're born but within six to 24 hours they have weeping eyes you know it's it's the fluids weeping out their eyes have got wet down here sometimes both eyes so they can have it more serious one side than the other but you've got to be very careful to check you know you should see the the eyelid itself on a healthy lamb if it looks a bit turned in a tiny bit or quite turned in then the old shepherds out in the you know on the hills and stuff well they didn't ha have everything with them maybe and they used to pinch them really hard and twist them and bruise them to make them swell up and it will push it out again but uh, only less than 20 50 percent of that works and they will go blind if you don't treat them and it doesn't work and the best method and it, uh, if you've got a few pallets stacked up in your lamb yard with a bit of ply board across it to use as a table is to get some liquid paraffin about one mil of liquid paraffin you probably won't quite use all that depending on the size of the lamb's eyelid itself uh, you get one mil and it would be good if you had two people because you really need to hold them down you lay them down uh, with their head facing this way, if it was their left eye, for instance, uh, their left side facing up, and uh, you get one mil of liquid paraffin, not too big a needle. I mean, you don't want a cattle-sized needle to do this. You want a, a normal sheep-sized needle. I don't know the gauge. I can't remember. But basically, you lay them down, and uh, it's what you do is they've got a double eyelid. They've got the outer and inner eyelid on their eye, and you... At the angle, at that sort of angle almost, just prick the end of the eye and push the needle in gently because they will thrash about when you do it. So you hold that head down tight with this hand and you use your other hand to just push that needle in and you don't go in too far. You only need to just go in, uh, you know, so much. You don't need to go in very far, just under the skin. So it's between the inner and outer eyelid you've got into at that angle, you know, exactly, you know, flush with their eyes. So it's just sort of pricking the skin up and then going in. Uh, and then you just give them, you know, enough. And you can see as it works, as you gently squeeze it in, this eyelid will push out and the inner one you will see blow up a little tiny bit. You're about to see it a tiny bit blown up inside. 
you know, because you've just made it like a like a football, more or less, inside. And that works virtually every time without fail, doing that. And, you know, that's why they get somebody else there if you can to hold them down so they're, you know, not going to move and you hold their head absolutely solid because you don't want them moving about when you're sticking a needle near their ear, near their eye, sorry. And then you can turn them over and do the other side. And you want to go from the back of their eye forward on both sides if you can, in that side and in that side, more or less flush, needle flush level with their eye. So it's just going in at that uh, very slight angle. That cures it almost without fail. If you don't, they'll be blind and you know, it's uh, harder to cure later on than what it is at that time. So always check their eyes for that in turned eyelids. Uh, now doctoring, uh, you need to doctor your lambs. Well, if you do doctor them, uh, depends where you are, how cold it is where you are, how, le- how long you leave the tail ewe lambs and, and ram lambs. So, you you know, the standard is that it must cover the anus on a male lamb and it must cover the vulva on a female lamb. So, you know, you can look and see. But if you look under a lamb's tail, it's skin. And there's two strands of skin that they use to waggle their tail either side of that. And at the bottom of those two strands, that's where it wants to be minimum because that will cover a male and female to the right level so uh you know it's uh, roughly you know so long just over an inch maybe uh that you you leave on there now with female uh females you know you, you can just put them between your welly boots facing away behind you put them between there lift their tail up straight up the tail look for the bit of skin let it go bang it's done so uh the male lambs Best to sit them up facing forward, almost like they're between your welly boots in a deck chair position, <laughs> sitting like this, slightly backwards. And, you know, you then got access to the testicles, the scrotum and their tail. So you quickly just shove one, uh, ring up their tail to the end of that skin, or if you're further north, longer and longer. So you take the ring off when it's in the right position on the male lamb. That's fine. Doing the testicles, again, put your ring on your, uh, on your grips and open it up, push it down onto the scrotum and, and, you know, slightly more down on the far side. So it's pushing the testicles up into the scrotum uh, and then just test both the testicles there. Now release it a bit, not fully, almost fully release it and check you've got both testicles in there, you know, before you fully release it, almost fully released. And then just have a look that both the teats on the male lamb are not trapped inside that ring. Because if they're trapped inside that ring, you could cut off their penal cord. They they won't be able to urinate. And, you know, they'll have all sorts of problems because of that. They'll be dead within days. So, uh, yes, uh, make sure neither of the male ram's uh, teats are in that uh, uh, ring, rubber ring, and you should be all right. Just slowly release it. Check the both the testicles there again. Pull it off. Just check the testicles and you're away. Of course, you do get some that don't let their testicles down too well. They're a job to do, you know. But uh, sometimes you've got to leave them for another day. Or sometimes you can you can get your finger down below them and force them up into that enough to do. But you do get problems sometimes. And the old one, you just can't get one of the testicles or both up. So it's just a case of marking them very much. And, and then they may be catching them later on trying to do them. So that's sort of that. Um, I've said about um, milk fever with the ewe. I mean, if your ewe suddenly goes down after lambing and, you know, get, it feels very hot as well, you know, you can take a temperature. <coughs> There's a good chance she's got milk fever, which is hypercalcemia and a lack of calcium because the sudden drop down of milk, all the calcium from her body's been drained into into milk production. And all you need to do is behind the front shoulder here, there's a loose flap of skin, is have a bottle of uh, calcium, uh, which they use for dairy cows as well, 500 ml bottle. Get yourself a 50 ml syringe with a fairly decent gauge needle on it, a reasonable gauge needle, and just draw out 50 ml of that and put under her skin, between the skin and the, the rib cage, the muscle, because it's a subcutaneous rather than intermuscular injection. And you just push that 50 ml in there. If she's a very small you, that would probably do it, 50 ml. But uh, you feel it sort of bubble the skin up. It uh, it come up in a bubble where you've injected that in. Just uh, take the syringe, the needle in the 
well, it's better if you had two needles, one in the bottom, one in the sheep, because you can take the, the syringe off, put it on the needle in the bottle, draw another 50 mil, if she's a, a reasonable size you, put it back on that needle and squirt that in as well. And you've got 100 mil of, of calcium in there, that's all they need. Um, you know, within an hour, she should be back to rights, hopefully, and should be okay, but keep her eye on her, maybe keep her back for 48 hours just to see if she's okay. And then, you know, into the follow-on pens and ready to go out into the field. And next week, I'll talk about some of the problems you might get out in the field. So so cleanliness is good <laughs> uh, in the lambing yard. Plenty of disinfectant. You know, if you've got disease spreading about, then, you know, uh, have a foot dip as well to dip your boots. If you've got visitors coming in, always be wary of the diseases they can pick up as well, especially pregnant women. Don't let them in your lab and yard if you can help it. <laughs> so anyway, I'll talk to you uh, next week. Cheers. Neil.